All right, guys, we're going to pick up where we left off here um, today in class on um, Wednesday before Easter break, and we're going to finish up the aerobic and anaerobic training notes so we can dive right into the heat and fluid replacement notes when we get back on Wednesday. And uh, something else that, um, as we've been talking about, the sympathetic nervous system is related to this, um, and uh, and so the higher sympathetic nervous system activity is, the the more blood lactate we have, and you can see this is just showing the relationship between blood lactate and blood epinephrine levels, and they pretty much go right along with each other. So the more stressful exercise is, the more anaerobic systems we use, and the more lactate we, we have. Um, and so this is the same idea that we're getting back to, that um, with endurance training, we, um, we decrease the stress that any given exercise intensity is on the body. And so we have less epinephrine release from the, from the medulla, or the adrenal medulla, um, and, uh, and that's going to affect all those things. But exercise intensity is tightly linked with uh, how much epinephrine release we have. Um, but then after training, we have kind of a downtick of that. That same exercise intensity will, be, will produce less epinephrine release because exercise is less stress on the body. Okay, so just to kind of summarize what we've been talking about here, uh, we see this increase in lactate threshold with training, which really is going to boil down to um, a uh, greater percentage of our VO2 max that we can sustain for racing, which allows us to have a greater race pace and faster endurance performance. Um, and we talked about RER and oxygen uptake. So RER, what we see here is we see a lower RER at any submaximal intensity, which means that we're burning more fat because we're using, we're able to exercise at a, um, at a level that feels like less stress in the body, so the body's able to use more fat. Uh, maximally, we actually see a higher RER. We didn't really talk about that much, but higher RER is because we, the body just gets used to dealing with, with hydrogen ions, used to dealing with lactate, and so the, so the body starts allowing for a little bit more accumulation of those uh, metabolites. Um, and so the maximum RER will probably be higher after training. Um, oxygen uptake, we see a slightly lower submaximal oxygen uptake. And so we talked about we're become a little bit more efficient with each um, exercise intensity. And this is really um, due to the fact that we're using more type 1 fibers to um, sustain the pace that we need and less type 2 fibers. And obviously maximal oxygen uptake is going to be increased. With that increase, we see in VO2 max. Okay, um, <clears throat> so we see that uh, increases in VO2 max plateau um, pretty early on um, in, an, in a training program, um, but what we see is that uh, we can still improve performance, and this is kind of what we've been getting at. We see VO2 max rise maybe 25 to 30 percent with training, um, but we can, we can improve our performance more than that. And that's all due to the fact that we we can are able to sustain a higher percentage of our VO2 max um, during training or during racing, and that's that's going to be more tightly linked to the lactate threshold. But really, that maximal sustainable intensity is going to be somewhere probably kind of right between lactate threshold and, and VO2 max, and that's going to be somewhere right around where our maximal sustainable intensity is, and that's also known as critical power or critical velocity if you're uh, running. <clears throat> okay, and we'll just talk a, a little bit about some of the anaerobic adaptations that we see. Um, and so we don't have as much ability to improve uh, anaerobic power as we do aerobic power. Some of the highest um, increases we ever see in anaerobic power go up to 25%, but uh, sometimes we don't see any changes. Um, and so this is, again, measured by a Wingate test. Um, and so that's that. And so we'd, some of the changes we do see have to do with changes in uh and muscle fibers themselves. So um, some of the, the type 2 fibers actually have some hypertrophy, um, and we see some switching from, from the type 1 to type 2A fibers um, and with, uh, with high-intensity kind of anaerobic sprint-type training. Um, we also see some improvements in some of the enzymes that uh, run the ATP creatine phosphate system, and so we see uh, creatine kinase activity can be increased modestly. Um, not by a lot, but we can see some. So we see maybe a 15% increase in, in the creatine, phosph or in creatine kinase enzyme activity. Um, and they, um, they've done a few studies where they compare um, training with six-second bouts, so, so repeated six-second bouts or repeated 30-second bouts. Um, and, and so this is kind of 
interesting because you would think that we're tapping out the creatine phosphate system the best with a six second bout, not with a 30 second bout. But what they see actually is they don't, they didn't really see any improvements in creatine kinase activity with the six second training, um, but they did with the 30 second training. Uh, and so, but then there have been some other conflicting studies that have shown improvements with five second bouts. So we don't really know um, exactly the best way to do this, but but it seems to be longer than six second bouts would probably be a little bit better for, for training this system. Uh, we also see some improvements in glycolytic enzymes. So these are those anaerobic enzymes, um, anaerobic glycolysis enzymes. And so um, all the enzymes listed there, phosphofructokinase is the rate limiting enzyme for glycolysis. And so we do see improvements in that. Lactate dehydrogenase, that's at LDH, phosphorylase, all these, all these enzymes we've seen improvements uh, about 10 to 50% um, of, uh, of their activity. So, so you can see here, these are the anaerobic enzymes down here. So you can see creatine kinase, uh, untrained to anaerobically trained. We do see that little increase, increase there in myokinase, which is important for that system as well. Um, phosphofructokinase, we do see a nice jump in that, and that's really important uh, because that's the rate limiting enzyme in glycolysis. We can't see improvements in all of these. And so then the question is, what well, does this improvement in enzyme um, levels and enzyme activities translate to a perform, uh, performance change. Uh, and so back to that same study where they did 30 second versus six second bouts, um, they only saw um, enzyme improvement with the 30 second bouts, but the uh, same performance improvement was seen with the six, 30 second bouts or the six second bouts. So, so even though they saw, only saw uh, creatine kinase enzymes improve with the, with the uh, 30 second bouts, the performance went up the same in both in both bouts. So so the increase in performance was not linked to the to the increase in creatine kinase activity. So this is an area we still don't have a lot of research on, so we're not really sure exactly what's going on here.